Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. I've traveled to Poland under really unusual circumstances to review this TCL X10 mini LED television. Now, heeding my own advice to always use protection, I am donning a mask as you can see. It's been a while since something this tight has been sitting on my face. But let's talk about the TCL X10. And what I'm going to do now is to go through the user menu and show you what it looks like because this mini LED TV X10 is meant for the UK and European market. It is different from the 8 series which is sold in the USA. The 8 series in the US will be using the Roku TV platform whereas this X10 will be using Android TV. Navigating through the user menu which is powered by Android TV, we found it to be clearly laid out but slightly sluggish when compared with class leaders such as LG's WebOS, Samsung's Tizen or even the Roku TV OS of TCL's 8 series in the USA. So if I can actually summon the user menu, you can see that I'm in movie mode and brightness, the default setting will be much higher but I have lowered it to 8 so that it doesn't look overexposed on the camera. So what I'm going to do is to go into the advanced settings and then we'll go into brightness settings. Now you can see that the first option would be brightness. This would be equivalent to backlight on other LED LCD televisions but I think TCL has taken a leaf out of the books of Sony to try and name this as brightness which is the correct nomenclature by the way and then you get contrast and then you get black level which allows you to set the video black level again this is the correct nomenclature whereas on other televisions they would be labeling this video black setting as brightness and then you get dynamic contrast black stretch and dynamic backlight and then there is local dimming and also micro dimming so from what i understand local dimming is basically hardware in terms of the full array local dimming whereas micro dimming will be performing additional software adjustment to try and boost the contrast even further and then you know you get gamma now with gamma on the tcl it is slightly counterintuitive because if you increase the gamma it would actually make the gamma higher uh, make the picture darker whereas you know if you lower it it will make it brighter but we'll leave it at plus two and then later on I will talk about my findings when I calibrate this television. So next we'll go to color. Under color you get the color saturation control which is just a global setting, tint which adjusts the hue globally and then under color temperature you have several presets of warm, cold and normal. We'll leave it on warm and under white balance there are two point and also 20 point white balance controls and if I can get out from here, under color space, again, there would be auto, native, and custom. Custom would be the color management system that allows you to adjust the three primary colors of red, green, and blue, and then the three secondary colors of cyan, magenta, and yellow separately. And just like on Samsung LED LCD televisions, the color management system on the TCL X10 is RGB based rather than HSL based. So if I can get up from here and we'll go to clarity. Under clarity, there would be the sharpness control. I'm very happy to see that the default sharpness setting on the TCL X10 in the most accurate movie mode is zero, which means that there is no additional edge enhancement applied. And then there would be digital noise reduction and noise reduction, which you should turn off anyway as well and then radiation clear this is basically a decontouring filter that TCL has introduced on the X10 mini LED television now when I played this scene from the Martian when I enable it on the low setting it reduced some fine detail but on the high setting it certainly smudged away a lot of the fine detail so I think if you want to use it probably just leave it on low or even switch it off if you are purist and you want to see all the fine detail and film grain and what I'm going to do now is to try and go to the motion settings. Under the motion settings, there are three controls. LED motion clear is just really quite <laughs> hilarious how this is very similar to the LED clear motion on Samsung TV. This is basically black frame insertion or BFI, but they've just switched the 
towards motion and clear around so you get LED motion clear rather than LED clear motion. So if you engage LED motion clear, this will enable BFI or backlight scanning on this television. From my testing, what I saw was that the motion resolution went up from the sample and hole baseline of 300 lines to the maximum of 1080 lines. But you do get a slight drop in brightness, which is not a problem on this TV because this TV is very bright. It has sufficient light output to compensate. But what will put people off using battery insertion or LED motion clear on the T-cell X10 would be the flickering that presents itself in bright scenes and also very noticeable image duplication artifacts. If we go back to the motion settings, I'll show you the two other motion interpolation settings. So there are blur reduction and jitter reduction controls as well. Blur reduction will apply motion interpolation on high frame rate content. By high frame rate, I mean 50 hertz or 60 hertz content to increase the motion resolution from the sample whole baseline of 300 lines to what is on this TV a maximum of 650 lines, whereas jitter reduction will be applying motion interpolation on low frame rate content, say 24 hertz or 25 hertz or 30 hertz content to smooth out any 24p jitter. But by engaging jitter reduction, you will be introducing some soap opera effect and also some interpolation artifacts, especially in complex scenes. One note about blur reduction, occasionally there would be a stutter, especially when the motion interpolation kicks in. So if you want the cleanest motion, you would have to switch all of these motion settings off, but you will be getting just the regular semi hole motion blurring. Despite using a native 120Hz panel, the TCL X10 exhibited very mild tadesinic jitter during slow panning shots in 24 frames per second movies. So let's talk about some basic findings about this TCL X10 then. I put a microscope on the panel and it is indeed using a VA type LCD panel with a true RGB subpixel structure. And because this is a full array local dimming set, I put on our own custom ordered test pattern consisting a small white box crawling horizontally and then vertically against the borders of a black background. And I counted 32 vertical columns and 24 horizontal rows giving us a total of 768 independently dimmable zones. Now, when I put up an ANSI checkerboard pattern to try and measure the native black level, I was surprised to find that this TCL X10 allows local dimming to be switched off. Whereas I think, you know, on Samsung TVs since probably 2017 or 2018, they have never allowed for users to switch off local dimming in the user menu. but because we can switch local dimming off on the TCL X10, we were able to measure the native black level and native contrast of the display. So on a 4x4 ANSI checkerboard pattern, once we aligned peak white to 120 nits, we measured a black level of 0.025 nits, which is very good by LED LCD standards. And once you enable local dimming, obviously because of the sheer number of local dimming zones, the black level would drop to 0.002 nits, which is again an outstanding achievement. Now, when it comes to blooming suppression, I think this TV does quite a good job on axis, off axis, because this is a VA type LCD panel, obviously you will see some more blooming. Now, when you talk about blooming suppression, you always have to be worrying about whether the shadow detail would be retained, would be preserved, or they would be crushed. Now, I'm pleased to report that in SDR, the shadow detail is intact. If you look at the scene from Skyfall, as M comes home, you can see all the dark detail in the room. But I think, you know, when it comes to HDR, there's still some slight black crush, as you can see from this black clipping pattern from the Ryan Masiola test disk and this would transfer to some content as well. At the other end of the HDR contrast spectrum, the TCL X10 managed to resolve up to 2000 nits of bright detail on this white clipping pattern. Another issue that we found 
especially in comparison with the Samsung Q90R QLED television and also the LG C9 OLED, which TCL has kindly provided beside this TCL X10 for benchmarking. You can see that there is some near black posterization as well, which again, would rear their ugly head from time to time in dark scenes in real-world content. In terms of screen uniformity, our review unit showed very mild DSE or dirty screen effect on mid-tone greys. The camera makes it look worse than it actually is in person. There's no color tinting and only a slither of darkening around the edges. So just like the USA 8 series, this X10 Mini LED TV is the cleanest TCL we've seen to date when it comes to screen uniformity. To assess upscaling, we used this SMPT RP123 test card in 576 resolution. The scaling looked on the soft side and generated some junk pixels, but the upside is that there's no obvious fizziness or ringing artifacts. Unlike LG and Samsung TVs, overscan can be switched off for standard definition content. Let's talk about the HDR side of things then. So this is a mini LED television with 768 zones and it has a quantum dot enhancement film which allows a very high color volume. So peak brightness on this TV reached nearly 1,900 nits according to our measurements on a 10% window and 570 nits full fill. And DCI-P3 coverage came in at 96% UV and 77% REC 2020. Now when we displayed HDR scenes, not only on this TCL X10, but also on the Samsung Q90R and also the LG C9 in side-by-side -side comparisons, we found that the TCL X10 obviously delivers extremely punchy and bright images because of the sheer light output and color volume that it is capable of. But unfortunately, in terms of the tone mapping, I think that even though on test patterns it measured fairly accurate to the ST2084 standard, in real world content, depending on the APL, the TCL X10 would be brightening the picture unnecessarily versus reference. So I ran a number of scenes, including Planet Earth 2, which I believe is mastered to under 600 nits. So the C9 OLED, which is only 700 nits, should be reproducing it accurately. But you can see that the TCL X10 is brightening it too much, even brighter than the Samsung Q90R. And when I displayed many other scenes, such as this one from Arrival, you can see that the TCL X10 is brightening the picture and as a direct result in certain other films because it is brightening it too much you actually see a bit more blooming as well so as part of my test for blooming suppression especially when white subtitles come on I use this campfire scene from the Revenant and as expected the Samsung is suppressing the brightness of the subtitles to reduce the hollowing or blooming artifacts but because the TCL X10 is still brightening the picture excessively to try and scale it to its peak brightness of 1900 nits I think the subtitles obviously look extremely bright but there's also correspondingly a bit more blooming as well on the other hand if we looked at this scene from Sully you can see that the top and bottom letterbox bars on both the Samsung Q90R and also the TCL X10 are as good as black because they have done a lot of work to try and focus on these zones and make them jet black. But I think on the Samsung Q90R, you can see that the signboard is less bright than the TCL X10 because I think the blooming suppression on the Samsung Q90R is more aggressive to reduce blooming. I think it's a balance. So the next scene that I put on would be this Starfield scene from the Spears and Mansell UHD HDR benchmark disc. And again, I think on LED LCD, you will always have to balance between getting more blooming or respecting the brightness of the elements on screen. So the OLED, obviously because it has per pixel control, it will be showing all the stars accurately as they actually appear. But the TCL will appear next and then suddenly brighten quite a lot. And then the Samsung will be trying to suppress the blooming. So 
the stars won't look as clear as on the TCL X10, but as a direct result, they will have less blooming and greying artifacts as well. One advantage LED LCDs such as this TCL X10 holds over OLED is full screen brightness. Since OLED is restricted by ABL or automatic brightness limiter circuitry, which is designed to protect the panel. So let's talk about the last aspect here, which is gaming. So yeah, I forgot to actually show you that there are two ways to engage game mode on the TCL X10. One way would be to select game mode directly from the picture preset, and the other way would be to go into the system settings where you can actually engage game mode and both will be deriving from the same setting so both achieve the same results it's just like there are two ways to do it and what i'm impressed about the game mode on the TCL X10 would be that they are targeting a white point of D65. If we go into color here, you can see that the default color temperature would be warm, which targets D65. So this is going to be very accurate to the creator's intent rather than the over blue color temperature that almost every other manufacturers use. And the other thing of note would be the input lag. So with the default setting of game board, the local dimming is switched off because local dimming off is necessary to achieve the lowest input lag on the TCL X10 so it measured around 20 milliseconds but once you engage local dimming because there are more video processing involved to try and control the zones the input lag will go up to around 53 milliseconds in either the low or high settings so I think on LED LCD again if you want to achieve the greatest gaming responsiveness you will have to sacrifice the picture quality and sometimes i am that sort of person who don't really mind not having a good picture as long as my name is on top of the leaderboard so another thing that obviously i need to tell you about the tcl x10 would be that it is totally resistant to image retention and also permanent screen burn so if you look at this sequence here where I displayed a 10% window at 100% stimulus for about 10 seconds and then we switch to a full field slide. You can see that the OLED will be retaining the box for some time before clearing away whereas the Samsung Q90R and also the TCL X10 will be totally resistant and that may drive some of you to go for this LED LCD it's just for your own peace of mind. Okay, so I need to run off to try and catch a plane, typical, but I think to sum up my impression of the TCL X10, I don't think it is too different from the 8 series that I've actually tested in the States. I think there have been some minor improvement in terms of the black crash, so I think they have improved the black crash and also certainly on test patterns, the tone mapping certainly tracks closer to the ST2084 standard but I still think that there is room for improvement in several aspects especially in terms of how the picture should be presented on screen if you found this video useful please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV test YouTube channel for more videos like this thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video